Hello, this is Stan Harder, developer of Digital Pipe Fitter. This video shows how to use the node and the mitered node joints. Most joints in Digital Pipe Fitter are simple joints between two pipes. There are times, however, where you might need more than two pipes coming together at the same point. An example of this would be a truss structure, like this example. These joints are primarily intended for structural assemblies, but can also be useful for plumbing purposes. These joints can be very complicated with dozens of different size pipes coming together at any imaginable angle in three-dimensional space. The most basic node joint looks a lot like a branch joint, but that's just because in this example there is only one branch. It's controlled with parameters very similar to the branch joint. Branch angles vary from 45 degrees shown to 90 to approaching 180. Let's go back to 45 for now. Lateral offset moves the branch sideways, where positive is to the right and negative is to the left. Rotation around the header can be any positive or negative number of degrees. Zero is on the top, 90 degrees to the right, 180 below, and negative 90 to the left. There is an additional setting for displacement which is the position along the header where the intersection is to be, which, is, which only makes sense after I add another branch to move relative to. We can add another branch with the Add Branch button. Now we have branch 1 and branch 2. The displacement setting moves a branch along the length of the header in either a negative or positive direction. By setting the displacement of branch 2 to 4, I can move the branch 2 along the header to a point 4 inches from where branch 1 intersects the header axis. The order that the branches appear is important. The software constructs the joint the same way that a welder would, one branch at a time. So the first branch is positioned without regard to the second branch. Then the second branch is cut to snuggle around any previously positioned pipes, and so on. Let's swap the order of these two branches and see what happens. Do that by clicking on the up-down arrows by the branch parameters. Now you can see that this branch was set in a place before this one was. And back again. The nodes that can be designed are endless and can be quite complicated and there are lots of special cases where the resulting cut lines might not exactly look like what you expect. It often will help to try to reorder the branches to get a more reasonable solution. With displacement back to zero, we can see that the cut lines of the various branches using these tabs. But what about the header? There are no holes. Let's look at the joint construction setting to change that. Currently we are set to branch ends on surface and hole bevel type as no cut. Changing hole bevel to bevel cut, now we have holes for plumbing applications. In the header there are two holes, but there's also a hole created in branch 1 to open it up into the end of branch 2. The template for branch 1 will have an end cut and a hole. It's not shown as a single cut line because on more complicated cases it may have to be two cut lines. Plus this gives the fabricator the option to cut the hole or not. I can show you by moving branch 2 by a displacement of 2 inches so the node looks like this. Now the template is obviously an end cut and a separate hole. Let's go back to joint constructions. The branch end settings does not have all the settings that a standard branch joint does. Most of those settings don't make sense for a node type joint. But there is a new setting besides on surface. We now have an aligned setting. Instead of the branch setting on the surface of the header, with the aligned setting, the bevels set flush against each other. The outside diameter to outside diameter and inside diameter to inside diameter. This is what you would expect for a butt weld or a mitered joint or a Y joint. 
which we will explore in a few minutes. By setting both bevel cuts to perpendicular, we get a case where the outside edges of all the bevels are touching the outside edges of the others. The hand beveled setting almost never makes sense for node joints. The results are usually not useful except in very simple cases. The miter joint is very similar to the node joint except that the header has a mitered ang angle. This angle ranges from 0 to 360 degrees. Here we see 270, 90 degrees is up, and 180 degrees is straight. The branch is specified relative to the first segment of the header. Let me show you a few special cases. First, branch to branch end interaction. Using an on-the-surface construction with parallel cut bevels, we see that the ends of the two branches are interfering with each other. This might look like a mistake, but we need to avoid gaps in the joint, and since we are using parallel cut, the only way to do this is if the fabricator were to grind off the tips of the branches so that they do not interfere. This interference only applies to branch to branch end interactions. If the header pipe's bevel is involved, which is a much more common case, the bevels are included in the calculations so that you will see tabs in the branches at the notches in the header. These tabs will need to be cleaned up during fabrication depending on the size of the weld bead in the header joint. This is true for any step in the process where the branch overlaps a previously welded intersection. Some adjustments to the next branch may need to be made to fit around the previous welds. If we specify a lateral offset that makes a branch pass partially by the side of another pipe, the software assumes that this is a structural support and not intended for liquid transport so no hole is created in the other pipe. If, however, the branch pipe touches some part of the node assembly at every point around its circumference, then all the pipes it touches will have holes. This rule results in a few cases that might look like mistakes where holes exist that you don't expect or want, but it's better to have too many holes drawn in the template that you can ignore than to leave one off that you really want. Here is an example of this situation. This branch 2 is touching the assembly all of the way around so that it assumes you want a hole in the previous branches as well as the header. But because of the angles of the branches, the hole in the header extends beyond the other side of the other branch. During fabrication, the operator would likely want to cut this part of the hole and ignore this part. In this specific case, the software might have been able to figure out what you intended. But there are other very similar cases where the intent of the designer is not obvious. This is one of those cases where changing the order of the branches makes the node joint much cleaner and easier to fabricate. Let me close with a useful but not obvious use of the mitered node joint. If we start with a mitered node and place a branch to intersect the corner of the header miter, we've created a bifurcation or a Y joint. But an on surface bevel cut joint is probably not what you want here. Changing joint construction to aligned gives the butt joint type that you probably do want. Perpendicular cut makes the end preparation simpler and still makes a clean beautiful joint. If you add more branches we can create a really elaborate infrication. The possibilities are endless. So download Digital Pipe Fitter today and start unleashing the potential of your business.